G2 had been looking completely unstoppable through the first two events of the RLCS season. Despite losing a match in Swiss for the first time all split, G2 was still able to fight their way to the Grand Finals, where they would meet a familiar foe in Gen G. And this time, Gen G made it their mission to dethrone G2. And in today's video, we'll be discussing how they managed to do just that. We're going to be taking a look at a couple of moments here from the final game of the Grand Finals played between Gen G and G2. And what we're really going to be looking out for is Gen G's ability to make G2's playstyle work against them. What this means is that Gen G wants to take the fact that G2 wants to challenge the bull extremely quickly and turn that into something that's going to create a lot of problems for G2 on the defensive half which is what we're gonna see here as we take a look through a couple of these plays so we're gonna start off right here on chronic cam only 30 seconds into this game five and as we kick things off here we're gonna have an aerial 50 50 between first killer and daniel with both beast mode and chronic prepared to jump up for this ball after the 50 50 has happened however what we're gonna see though is that chronic is not going to give beast mode any amount of time to even think about jumping for this ball and despite what g2 wants to do chronic is actually going to get up into the air earlier than beast mode and what this is then going to cause is some very awkward situations on the back end for g2 because beast mode here instead of like rotating out this way and allowing atomic to come across therefore maintaining a good circular rotation he's actually just going to go back into the corner this way after driving up the wall for a bit which is going to create a very awkward situation where all three g2 players are going to be stuck along the same corner wall while chronic is pushing this ball forward this makes g2's defense incredibly awkward means that they can't really challenge the ball much at all and all of this happened firstly because chronic was just faster into the air than beast mode and secondly because beast mode decided for some reason to rotate back into his own corner even though he had help behind him so this is going to create this awkward situation where G2 is just trying to figure out how to get someone to challenge the ball. And of course, Chronic here is going to just kind of wait a little bit patiently and let G2 be quite awkward and just make sure that he gets a solid 50-50 before he sees his way out. Of course, on his way out, if he can grab some boost, even better because now that again continues to reduce the speed that G2 is able to challenge the ball at. Meanwhile, we have apparently Jack already right here waiting to challenge this touch coming through from Atomic. Of course, Atomic coming from an incredibly awkward situation is going to mean that apparently Jack is able to jump on in on this and force Atomic to lose control of the ball, while Chronic is also causing more havoc by bumping Beast Mode back out of the play, again just further slowing G2's recovery after they were in that awkward spot. So as this ball pops from the side, we're next going to see Atomic get this light touch out, looking like it's going to be a nice setup touch for Daniel to jump up for, except for the fact that apparently Jack is going to completely deny that space, make sure that he slows down the oncoming touch from G2, and forces Daniel to work through him, which is exactly what Daniel's going to have to do if he wants to touch the ball. Unfortunately, Jack does get the bump off, so now Daniel is once again in an awkward spot and this has given first killer time to circle around and now immediately challenge this ball again therefore not allowing g2 to get the free counter attack so it's things like this that really restrict the speed that g2 play at just these awkward bumps coming from awkward angles you don't see them going for them all the time but when they do go for them it results in just little plays like this where you've bought enough time for your another one of your teammates to come in for a challenge, which is what we're going to see as First Killer dives on in here. Now, of course, Daniel has just picked up that middle boost, so he's going to be looking to challenge this ball right away, except for the fact that, oh yeah, apparently Jack is still right on him, and yeah, no, Daniel's not going to have a challenge here. So now, G2 was thinking that they were going to have a challenge, and instead, Chronic has a free ball up the wall. No one on G2 was quite prepared to have to defend this, so now Chronic is going to have a bit of time for control. So now the real question is, what can Chronic do here to slow down G2 as much as possible? And the answer is, try to put the ball in as awkward a situation as he can. Because of all the space that he has, he can start this air dribble off, and as he's flying through the air, he can gauge how 
how he's being challenged, and then work to get the ball over those oncoming challenges just to waste out some G2 resources. Meanwhile, of course, first killer is going to be down there in the G2 corner looking for some more bumps on Atomic as he's finding his way out. Therefore, you know, just, just slowing down Atomic just a little bit more. Here's Chronic, though, recognizing the space, seeing that no one is in the air yet. So the best thing he can do is keep this ball as high as possible, force them to come to him, which is exactly what he does, forces Beastman to jump way up high, and he does get bumped up and he pushes this ball all the way to the backboard, where now we have a lapse in defensive play here from Atomic and Daniel. Atomic here is sitting on zero boost, he's actually a missed this corner over here we can see that it's still sitting over there as he was rotating back partially caused by the bumps first killer was going for as he was rotating out which means that atomic now can't really make this play but daniel is also diving away from it thinking that atomic will indeed have the clear so once again we've caught g2 in an awkward defensive position and their slowness in being able to get a touch on this ball is again going to allow first killer to come in for the ensuing challenge which is going to put the ball back in another awkward spot, high up into the air, bouncing down off the ceiling. And of course, because G2 is still trying to recover out of yet another awkward defensive position, apparently Jack is able to come right on in, and he could, if he wanted to, shoot this ball on target. There is certainly an opportunity here, but instead, Genji is really sticking to this idea that they just want to make G2 as awkward as possible. So where Jack could take this shot, he is instead going to just keep this ball high in the air in an awkward spot, and he is going to force the G2 defense to come to him, therefore making them use up resources and making sure that G2 does not have a full say as to what's going on in the play. Abjack's main goal here is to keep the ball in his own team's possession and keep G2 on the back foot, which is exactly what we're gonna see. Because Abject is gonna carry this ball through the air, Atomic still on pretty much zero boost on the backboard, and Abject is not going to just like slam this thing into the backboard and hope it bounces somewhere good. Instead, he is literally just going to float behind it, force Atomic to come to challenge him, make sure Atomic can't get any kind of clearing pass out to like the sidewall where beast mode might be able to be waiting instead abjack's gonna block off that angle entirely and say look atomic you want this ball you're gonna have to take control of it and try to get past all of the defense in front of you so atomic is going to try to do that gonna try to take control off this backboard but again the pressure that genji has been applying here has put the G2 defense again in an awkward situation where we have two players rotating back. Daniel had just been out at the mid boost and beast mode while this ball was hovering high in the air here was in net but then decided as Atomic was planning to take control of this that he was going to go grab this corner boost. But this of course has now left Atomic completely alone with first killer right here to challenge. And you know when you leave one player back defending the net Anything can happen with a 50-50, especially when you have a player falling off the wall awkwardly like this. First killer is going to take advantage of that, get a solid challenge back out into the midfield. Chronic right here waiting for that ball to pop out to him. And again, he can capitalize on the speed that he has by just facing the play already to slot this ball past Daniel. And Beast Mode is unable to recover out of the corner before it ends up in their net. As you can see, the real way that Gen G broke down G2 was all about using G2's speed against them. Since G2 wants to challenge the ball quickly, if you can steal their boost, mess up their rotations, and put the ball in awkward spots, it really slows down their ability to challenge the ball one player after another, which means that you have more of an opportunity to come in for consistent challenges and ball control. The key to beating G2 in this situation was really to keep the play in your own hands and not give them an opportunity to control the play at all. And if you can hold that control for a long enough time, G2's need for speed will work against them they will put themselves in awkward defensive situations and they will end up conceding a goal from it staying on chronic cam here we're going to be looking at the second goal that gen g is going to be getting in this game and we're going to be looking for a lot of the same ideas gen g shutting down the speed from g2 and then g2 making defensive mistakes from not being able to play their own game 
So apparently Jack here is going to just be carrying the ball through the air. Again, not losing possession of it, just forcing the G2 defense to come to him, which is exactly what's going to happen as he gets that challenge with beast mode. And now we're immediately going to see the awkward defensive positionings coming out from G2 as both beast mode and Daniel are going to wander onto this side of the field. Beast mode trying to control the ball up the wall while Daniel sits kind of awkwardly underneath it, very close to the play, waiting for something to maybe fall to him. First killer is going to be ready for this challenge to come across, and he is going to shut down this clear from Beast Mode before it can even develop. So now apparently Jack with the ball sitting on the backboard here is going to look for any way that he can further slow down G2's ability to clear the ball, which you know, you can definitely clear the ball with one player, but it is certainly nice to have a second one who can work up field when this initial clear comes out. So Abjack to make sure that there's only pretty much a one-on-one -on -one between Chronic and Daniel here in an attempt to clear the ball. Abjack's just going to take Atomic out of this play and make sure that he can't really be much of a factor in it. So now Daniel gets this loose touch and instead of Atomic being able to jump up for this maybe and challenge Chronic, Chronic now has a totally free ball. Chronic does recognize the potential open net and he does go for it, just unfortunately not able to secure it. However, in the meantime, Abjack is currently stealing this corner boost over here and because of the bump that transpired on Atomic, we can see both Beast Mode and Daniel absolutely flying back to the net as fast as possible and we're gonna end up with all three G2 players in one very small area of the field. They do get the clear, but it certainly is a very awkward situation when you have all three players in your own box like this. And we can see the slight double commit as Atomic is also diving in pretty much. Daniel does get the clear out, but now G2 is certainly in an awkward spot. And again, right back to the same corner, we're gonna see two players once again heading over into this corner. First killer again ready to challenge along the wall. Taking advantage of the poor positioning from G2, he's just gonna push the ball right back around the corner, and now he's got a little bit of control. Beast Mode is working to bump First Killer out here, but again, we have two G2 players sitting on the backboard, both itching to just go challenge this ball to do something, and First Killer is kinda chilling. He doesn't really mind this. He's getting two players out for only himself which means that he is putting Genji in a fantastic position, regardless of how this really transpires. First killer does try to get the pass out, unfortunately it is just a little bit high over Abjack, but that is not a problem. And then this is a really smart play from Chronic. So naturally against G2, we would think that the earlier we can challenge the ball, the better. However, it is extremely important to recognize when G2 is not in a position to immediately challenge the ball and make sure that in those moments, we actually take advantage of those situations to put them in an even more awkward spot. So what we're going to see here is Beastman being out of the play. He's going to fly over this way. So you have two defenders left. Now, G2's nature is to make sure that one of these guys is coming to pressure the ball. But what's gonna happen is they seem to be a bit low resources, a bit hesitant. No one really presses forward. And now Chronic is gonna be able to get control along the wall. And we can see that Atomic and Daniel are just facing each other right here in the corner, completely at once again in the same spot, just because they couldn't organize themselves to go ahead and get any kind of challenge here. And now Chronic has a little bit of space to work with. He's going to go ahead and try to get this pass across. And this is the exact moment that we need to recognize. Look at how awkward the G2 defense is. Their speed in following the ball has gotten themselves out of position here. So now this is the exact moment we need to capitalize on this mistake by making sure we get the ball around the defense and into a shootable position for our teammate which is exactly what Chronic is going to do here. Banging the ball off the backboard, apparently Jack is waiting right there for it. And as any Rocket League player can tell you, when you're trying to defend your net coming out of the corner like this, when the ball is bouncing over your head this way, it's really difficult to get a read on where this shot is going. So as soon as both Atomic and Daniel ended up in this corner, as long as Chronic could get this ball into the midfield, it was pretty much curtains for G2, and that is exactly what we see. Now, some people might say that this really did come down to G2 making mistakes rather than Gen G really beating them. However, the fact of the matter is that it was the way Gen G played the game that put G2 into these awkward situations. 
Gen G identified the fact that G2 want to challenge the ball quickly, they want to be on the ball as fast as possible, moving it around the field as quickly as they can. And if you can find a way to disrupt their ability to do that, they will start tripping over each other and they will cause themselves a lot of defensive issues that you can then capitalize on. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, I really do appreciate each and every one of you that made it to this point in the video, and I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you click that subscribe button right down below, so you make sure you don't miss any future Rocket League content. Additionally, if you'd like to be a bit more involved in the community that we're building here, feel free to join my Discord, which I'll have linked down in the description. And as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. See you later, guys.